Hello, and welcome to a video that I've been thinking on making for a long time. Today, I'm going to be talking about how you could, if you wanted, to build your own universe. Whether cinematic, comic book, in, in a comic book, or here on YouTube. Here's an idea of what you could do. So, as you know, um, if you watch all of my YouTube channels that I've done, um, one of them being, um, uh, what is it, LMF Productions, Key Comics Productions, whatever, um, <coughs> sorry, I'm a bit sick, um, in that channel, I basically just do stop motion stuff, not only really stop motion, I, whatever you call it, um, and it originally started with DC, and right now, I mean, uh, recently DC, the brand themselves, have been going through a little change with James Gunn rebooting their universe. So I want to do a little video basically saying how you could make your own universe. So what you want to start with is there could be two different types that you do. One that I did for DC is I built it from the ground up. And basically what that is, is you uh, said is twice. Um, you you take characters and you tell the stories from their origins all the way through. So, for example, in my DC section, I did that with Superman, right? I had his origin, and I started with Superman, and then I moved to Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash. All of those guys had, like, their own little origin stories, right? Their, their origins, um, their creations of the characters happened in that project, in that moment. So, you know, you you could go and say, hey, th we're, so you could, you, one of them is you could start from the moment those characters are created. Like, for take example, Superman. You could start the story, first project of that universe, Superman. First scene of that universe, Superman's rocket flying from Krypton. That could be the first thing. Right from there, you would basically be kind of setting up a um, a universe where the characters you're you are watching them be created. You're watching Superman grow up to be the Man of Steel. You're watching Batman's parents get shot and him getting turned into Batman. Right? You're watch you're you're seeing it as it's happening. Right? So that's what I did for DC. Um, is I basically said like, yeah. This is what's going on. And at the time, DC, like I said, wasn't doing so good with their brands. Anyway, um, yeah, so after, like, years, maybe, like, a year, two years, maybe, of building from Superman to Justice League 3, I decided, okay, like, we've grown with these characters so much, it's time to kill them. And... Um, basically what, what I, what I meant by that, and I actually did kill the characters, is I figured, okay, I've pretty much told everything I can with these versions of the characters. I can't really do, like, a, I can't really switch up their stories without some big explanation, which wouldn't really work in that state of DC that I had. So, you know, because I want to try something new, I decided... Well, I need to make a Justice League 3, because I've made Part 1 and 2. So, interesting thing about the Justice League projects is, I had Part 1 and 2. Part 1 does not actually take place in that universe. It takes place in a future timeline, where basically the Justice League lose, right? They lose. Dark Side comes, Dark Side conquers everything. <clears throat> and the premise of this is that characters from that future come back to present day to try and stop that. Once they stop that, then you're on the new path of the new stories I wanted to tell. It's basically an excuse to tell different types of stories. <clears throat> so, I told, I gave Justice League 3. This movie killed off every Justice League member. It destroyed the, that universe. Sabak so comes in and basically kills everyone. Now, you may be thinking, they're the Justice League, right? You've had so many projects with them. How could they lose to this? If you're going to do something where a big other character comes in and kills all your characters, and, like, you're looking for the explanation of, like, how, 
right? How do you how, how do you kill this these this team? How do you kill like Superman? There's no kryptonite. How do you kill him? The answer is that they weren't ready. And what that means is and this is what I did is you could say okay, the reason they died like this, the reason they lost like this is because up until this point, you know, they've been dealing with these these easy guys, right? You've had Superman fight um I don't know, Lex Luthor, okay? He's a human, right? Over the years Superman learns how to deal with that, right? Batman Killer Croc, okay? Big monster, trouble up first, he can take care of him. You know, Green Lantern, same villain, other lanterns, right? It's, it's the same thing. After a while, they learn how to defeat these guys pretty quick. So, to make something different, I thought, okay, what if they face, what if they're at this point in their lives, they are so confident in things that when a real powerhouse demon shows up, basically, okay, in Black Adam, Sabaka's a joke, so I kind of took him, I'm like, this is a demon, this guy could have more potential, so I turned him into this villain. So, um, basically, in this Justice League 3, the Justice League are all high and mighty, right? You could do this with your team if you want to kill them. They're all high and mighty, you know, they're like, oh, I, I can do anything. Um, Dark Side comes to Earth, Pfft, doesn't matter, I'll just punch him, I'll be fine, right? Basically, kind of secretly relying on that plot armor. Well, Justice League 3, there is no plot armor. If you're going to do a universe reset and you really want to show how real these characters can be, don't give them plot armor. Just let it happen. So in Justice League 3, they basically realize there are beings out there that could kill them. And that's what Sabak does. He kills them, and I use that chance of them being dead, and you could do this too. Have the universe be wiped, right? Have a character come in, make it part of the story though, kill everyone. Massacre everyone, every character in that team, gone. And then, Lee, what I did, I had Reverse Flash basically do a Flashpoint, go back in time, met up with an old Bruce, and, you know, Flashpoint, blah, 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 universe gets fixed, right? That's what DC tried to do, um, the DCEU. <sighs> See how, how well that worked out for them. But, of course, they're a big brand company, so worse for... If they mess up, it's worse for them than it is for me. So, um, yeah, basically, if you want to, just use something like that. Basically, if you already have planned out that you're going to reset everything, that means no matter what you do in that final project before the reset, nothing really matters, right? So, because everything's just going to get reset anyway. So, that's why I decided all the characters are going to die. Superman, dead. Batman, dead. Wonder Woman, dead. Martian Manhunter, dead. Flash, not really dead because he needs to be re resetting everything. Hawkman, dead. Everyone dead because in that project, there is no plot armor. No one gets saved because they're not going to get saved anyway. It's a clean reset. So basically what I did is I decided, well, I really like some of the projects that came before so I use the logic because if you create this, you can do anything. You are the creator, right? Nothing can stop you. No one can stop you because it's your universe. You made it. You can make the rules. So I decided, okay, this is gonna erase. This is what X Men: Days of Future Past did. Erase the events of whatever you want to erase. Keep everything else good there. So I erased the events of Justice League Three. So Sabak never that killed anyone. And basically made it so Sabak, Sabak didn't show up. He doesn't exist, right? Justice League didn't die. They, they remember, okay, they remember things up to a certain point. Basically, so you can keep the story of like, oh, this is the same team. They have the same memories. Have them remember something up to a certain point, but then after that, it's like, wait, it's kind of fuzzy. So basically for me, the, the new Justice League that I'm using in this new universe is they remember everything up until they were right about to plan to fight Sabak. So they already have all that knowledge. That's how what you would want to do if you're going to just wipe everything and then restart. If you wanted to keep the same continuity. If you want to make a whole new universe based off characters that already exist, like I'm doing with Marvel, here's what you should do. You could either, one, build everything from the ground up, meaning... You have your own project, Iron Man, origin story, Captain America, origin story, 
Hulk origin story, you know, do their origin stories like that, or, which is what I'm doing with Marvel and what James Gunn is doing with DC, you go and you decide, okay, here we go, Marvel, because this is what I thought, Marvel characters, Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, they are so well known, everyone already knows their origins. Sure, I could put a little twist on it like I did with DC, but it would be better not to show the origin and instead kind of give little hints to it in the projects itself. So I'm not, it, let's say in a, in a Hulk project, I'm not going to say, oh yeah, the Hulk um, got hit with a gamma bomb, right? It just dropped on him. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say something different, but not show exactly what happened. I'm going to say like, like something like, yeah, the accident turned me into this, right? I'm not going to say exactly what happened in case I want to change it later. So that's something you could do if you wanted. You don't need to, but it's it, it's just a thought. So in Marvel, on my Marvel projects, I'm leaving the door open because I can pull whoever I want into that universe and I can keep whoever I don't want out. So I'm, having, I'm working on the X-Men project right now, right? You know the X-Men, but I'm going to do my own spin on it. So they already exist. It's just like telling it. Okay, so think of it like this. Think of like the team already having so many adventures. The project is just showing one of the many, right? So it's, it, it won't be like their first or last mission. It'll be one of the thousands that they have. So... Yeah, and um, that you could you could do that. That's something you could do if you wanted. Um, you don't need to, um, but you you could. Um, it's what I think is James Gunn is doing a hard uh, soft reboot, which is where you basically take the good parts of the universe that you want and get rid of the bad stuff and reboot with the new characters that you like. That's what he's doing. I think it's a pretty okay idea. You have the hard reboot, which is where you which is where you reboot everything. No characters, no characters left. Everything gets wiped. Basically, what that means is, if you have, uh, let's say, a line of Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Justice League movies, right? In this wiped, uh, complete reset universe, none of those exist anymore. All right, that Superman is gone. He doesn't exist. No one knows him. That version of Batman doesn't exist. Right? Basically, you're starting complete scratch. And then, and that that's a hard reboot, soft reboot. James Gunn, and yeah, that that those are basically the two types of reboots. So, yeah, um, hopefully that helped. If you're gonna build a cinematic universe, comic universe, those are some ideas. If you're gonna kill it, bring it back, um, whatever, whatever you want to do with it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. It was really fun making this, and I'll see you later.